I'm going to hand over to Dot. So, what are we making today? We are making Viennese biscuits and hopefully you have all the ingredients. <laughs> Do you want to run them through the ingredients? So, first you will need um, <laughs> 75 grams of unsalted butter or salted, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we only had salted butter, so we used salted butter. And actually, one of the tricks that you guys will have learned with us along the way is what happens with, with salt and chocolate. Can you remember? It's very yummy. It's really yummy. Salt brings out the chocolatiness of chocolate. So it's like a magic trick, really. Even if you have a hot chocolate at home, if you're um, making cocoa, hot cocoa at home, tiniest pinch of salt, and it makes it so much more chocolatey. Not a big oh. pinch, just a teeny one. And also, you need your butter to be soft. Yeah, you need your butter to be really soft. So um, Dot and I realized because it was so warm, we kept our butter in the fridge, but um, it was so hard that we took the beaters to it and made it nice and soft. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so there are two things that we need you to do before we get mixing. I'm really sorry, but you need to put your ovens on. <laughs> you need to put them on at 180 degrees C, which is about 375, I think, in the US. Um, I should know that off the top of my head, but I've forgotten. If anybody knows it, um, pop it in the chat. Um, and I'll make sure on the YouTube video that I've written it down. Um, so we're gonna put our oven on right behind us <laughs> at 180 now. And then the second thing that we need you to do, you don't have to do this, but if in your house somewhere, you've got one of these, a piping bag, or even a Ziploc bag will do. And what I call a large open star tip, which I'll show you what that looks like close up. Do you see, if I put it against the white, you can see. So that's really quite a big one. I can get my finger straight through it. If you've got one of those around, we could do a little bit of star piping later, but don't worry if you don't, no big deal. We'll just do them standard coin shape, which is lovely too and we can show you how to do that a bit later. Oh, all right. No, ingredients. No. Um, 40 grams of icing sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla essence. It doesn't really matter if you have vanilla extract because they're basically the same. What's the difference, can you remember? Vanilla essence is liquid, but vanilla extract is more thick. solid, it's thicker, yeah. yes, and that's because the extract has more vanilla in it, um, whereas the essence actually has quite a lot of alcohol in it and it's just sort of floating around. So if you can ever buy extract, do instead of essence. Um, 175 grams of plain flour. Right. 40 grams of corn flour and then for the chocolate filling because we've done the we will need 75 grams of um milk um and 75 grams of chocolate drops yes that's right and, and a teaspoon and 40 tablespoons of double cream. Of double cream, which is heavy cream if you're in the US. Um, and so we're going to do two things at the same time. The first thing that we're going to do is make sure that two things are happening. One is that your butter is soft. So if it's not, give it some welly. Get a big wooden spoon and a grown up who's muscly. Um, and being very badly behaved and torture them with a bit of smacking some butter around. And the second thing, oh, a horrible fly. The second thing we're gonna do at the same time is get our chocolate melting, which if it isn't already, <laughs> put it on a bain-marie. Now, we use a bain-marie once. Um, Laura? Yes, yes, How much chocolate do we need again? You're gonna need 75 grams of chocolate. And it doesn't matter if it's dark or if it's light. Um, if it's milk chocolate, that's fine. Um, what we're going to do, though, is so the 
these biscuits are a little bit like a shortbread biscuit. They're very dry and crumbly and light. And so the chocolate, it's quite nice actually if it's if it's quite sweet. So don't worry if you haven't got fancy dark chocolate. Um, both will work. One will just taste slightly more grown up than the other. Um, and then get yourself a little metal bowl um, over a small saucepan or a glass bowl over a small saucepan or a bain marie which is what we've got and make sure that the water underneath isn't touching the bowl that you put above it okay and we're going to put this on a very very low heat no. um you put your butter into a bowl we already have because and you put your sugar into it Yep. Yep. And you can give it a spray. You mix what you've got there. And then you will mix it. Sorry, I'm just muting everybody so you can't hear everybody's background noise. Yeah, so the first thing you're doing is putting your icing sugar into your butter and giving it a good old stir. I'll get those out of the way for you, sweetheart. You wouldn't believe that you were born in Singapore where it's this temperature every single day. <laughs> we are melting over here. That's fantastic. Can you see, guys, in her glass bowl that she's making sure that she gets all of the icing sugar well mixed in? She wants to show them a little bit of a close-up. Yeah, and they can see in the side, sweetheart, as well. That that's all getting nicely mixed in. Fantastic. Once you've done that, you can drop your vanilla in too. And as she said, extract, essence, it's fine. You know, these days it's tricky to get hold of precise ingredients. So, how much vanilla do we need again? We don't have the ingredients right by us, so it's a oh, bit. Oh, that's all right, sweetheart. You need one teaspoon of vanilla. Half a teaspoon, so two teaspoons. Yeah. I'll do this bit. I'll do this. One teaspoon. One, I do this one. Yeah, make sure you can it. Half is starting to get much more soft than yours is because we beat it. Uh, we beat ours. Yeah, ours was a bit, ours was pretty soft to start with, so don't worry if it doesn't look quite as wet as Dorothy's. And then we can pop in the, what we'll do is put the cornstarch in first. So you're going to need 40 grams of cornstarch or corn flour of our two flowers. Yeah. Yeah, but so some people call it cornstarch, some people call it corn flour. It's the same thing. But don't although cornmeal is not okay then. Cornmeal, not so good, no. <laughs> Okay, so we have cornmeal, not cornstarch or corn they flour. Had, they okay. had no idea. Let me, let me see it, how? Pretty grainy. Pretty grainy? Bummer. So don't worry about it and just add another 40 grams of plain flour or all-purpose flour. It'll be a slightly denser cookie, but don't worry about it. It'll be totally fine. The difference as well is that in the US, your protein ratios of your all-purpose flour is different to ours. Um, and so it'll work out just fine. But yeah, corn, uh, corn meal um, or ground corn is different from corn starch or corn flour. It's very confusing. <laughs> nice, you got that all in? Yeah. And then we're gonna add the flour and you can dump it in in one go. Or if you're not. As if you're not strong as me. <laughs> yeah, if you're not as strong as us girls, yeah, just do it little by little. What you don't want to do though is mix it and mix it and mix it once it's combined because the gluten boring, boring chefy stuff alert coming up. The gluten strands will tighten up as they work harder within the flour, and that will end up being a tough cookie. And what you want is um We've already got one tough cookie. I don't need any more in my kitchen. <laughs> so we want one that's gonna snap and crumble and be really light. So these cookies are gonna be ones that, um, apart from the ones that are made with only flour, 
for the most part, which will just be slightly more robust, for the most part, these cookies will be ones that you can snap really easily and even crumble when you squish them. Do we need to sieve the flour? You don't, darling. These days, it's very unusual to sieve anything. Unless it's flour that's been sat in the back of the cupboard for months on end, you shouldn't really need to do that. The only thing that I advise to, to um, to sift these days is cocoa because cocoa, especially cacao, gets quite packed and you end up with really hard little nuggets of cocoa through your mix, which you don't want. But these days, icing sugar and flowers are so processed, it's very unusual to really need um, to do that, especially when you're going to mix it through something that's quite firm, it'll get broken up anyway. Um, so once you've done mixing and it like that, mmm, that's pretty good. Do you want me to have a go? And Scoop it up around the edges, make sure we've got everything. It looks pretty good to me. Let me get the vanilla out of the way. And so once you've done that, make sure you haven't overdone it. And I'm just checking the chocolate, because you don't want the chocolate to boil, you just want it to melt. Laura? Yes? Ours looks, doesn't look like dough, it looks a bit more wet than dough. Because it's too... Hmm, I wonder why. Was your, um, was your butter very, very soft and liquidy? It was no. quite soft, wasn't too soft. Do you want to show me? Yeah. This is what it now looks like. Oh, wait, no, it's not here. <laughs> no, that looks fine. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think ours just looks a bit um, more like um, crumbly. Not the dough there, it's like mixture. If you, put, if you put a ball of it in your hand, would it hold together? No. It's not falling off the spoon though, is it? It's not like dripping off the spoon. You it's like put this. the flour, because that's why. Oh, I haven't put the actual flour in there. <laughs> That would be why. flour <laughs> again. So you needed 40 grams of corn flour or corn starch and then 175 grams of plain flour. Good catch, ladies. Flour is a very important part. Very important part to hold it together. That's definitely. Any ideas if you do not have vanilla essence? Yes, lots of ideas. Um, so if you're doing it for a grown up, go and find a bottle of Kahlua, Amaretto, um, anything with a little bit of a punch to it. If you don't have any, it really doesn't matter. You could also put some orange flower water or rose water in. We have um, water and we have almond extract. Absolutely, almond extract would be lovely. Yeah, Thanks. really, really nice. Yeah, go to town. Well, world's your oyster. The only limit is your imagination and your pantry. <laughs> um, so... So we've now got our dough. So hopefully by now you've pretty much got to the same stage as dog if you've managed to add in all your ingredients. I think what we'll do, yeah. We need to cut that. Yes, we definitely need to cut that. <laughs> it's not going to go anywhere if we don't cut it. Well, actually, no, first we need to put it into the bag. Yeah. So, so you've got some options once you've got your batter. Um, we're going to get out our baking tray with some baking parchment lining it. That's what happens in live TV, lady. <laughs> Wardrobe malfunction. You better wash your hands now too. At least it's only us eating these. We're not making these for anyone else. So. Well, actually, they're dangerous, but they don't count. We don't care about them. They're in our bubble. It's all good. Okay, so if, I'm just going to show you how to pipe these out. In case you've got a piping bag and a start it, you can do that. Oh, nice, that looks perfect. So you're going to get little baby ones there. So my one's quite a bit bigger. Can you see? So I, a mummy, could get a thumb nearly through that one, through the whole of that one. 
Yeah, you've got some fun shapes. So the classic shape is this one that's got a very open star tip and I'll show you why when we pipe them out. But if you don't have that, that's totally fine. We're just gonna um, ball out little round balls and flatten them slightly. You can do them in your hand. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can roll them in your hand, but to portion them out and make sure that they're all the same amount, which is key because you're gonna sandwich them together with the chocolate ganache um, later. You can use a couple of things to help you to measure it out so that they're all even. We've got a really natty little ice cream scoop that is a mini ice cream scoop. So it's about two thirds of the size of the normal one, isn't it? And that's, that's really useful. And you fill it and then wipe it across the edge of the bowl and pop it out. And then use your fingers to make it really neat and shiny and, um, and pretty. And we'll show you that. Second option is to take a tablespoon measure. So if you don't have a mini ice cream scoop, you can use a tablespoon measurement and do the same thing. Pack your tablespoon measurement, scrape it across the side of the bowl, and then dump that out. Don't worry if it's ugly and all cranky, because you can then take that and make it into a pretty ball shape and gently slightly flatten it. Or option three is to do it in a, um, a bag. A pastry bag. So, are you telling me how to pipe cookies? <laughs> Cut the end off your pastry bag and then drop your cookie tip in. Now, when you do it the first time, so I cut off a small amount because if you cut off too much and you've gone too far, it's hard to undo that but I haven't cut off quite enough, so I'm gonna cut a little bit further to make sure that the tip of my pastry bag comes right out of the top of the, the pastry bag, okay? So that your cuts in the teeth of the pastry nozzle, the piping nozzle, aren't interfered with by the end of the, the pastry bag. So Josh, you're going to show them how to do some round balls using the ice cream scoop and the tablespoon measure. Sure. And I'm going to do some of these. And what we're going to do as well, I'll move this out of the way, we're going to turn the heat off our chocolate. Sure. You will get a... And take it right off the heat. So get a, a towel or something and lift your chocolate away from the heat to allow it to cool down very slightly. So you will get a scoop and put it, like get a bunch of dough and then scrape it at the side of your bowl and then put it... Dump it out. Yeah. And don't worry, don't worry at this stage what it looks like. Um, we're gonna we're gonna mold them and shape them in a minute. So what you want to do right now is just get out an even amount, even size balls, because later when they come out of the oven and we sandwich them together, ideally we want all of the shapes to be similar sizes, if not exactly perfect, so that you can sandwich them together and they're the same on both sides. Which is very tricky if you pipe them but I'm gonna do my best to show you how to do that. How are you getting on? Good. Yeah. Okay. You will carry on doing that for until you have finished your mm -hmm. show. Yeah. But unless you're doing both um, scooping and stack. What mom's doing? Yeah, what mom's doing. So, um, the chocolate that we're melting. Did we put the um? Did we put the uh double the cream in, or are we just just no, we're just going to give it a moment so that it's not super super hot. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to give that a minute, and then we'll start. Okay, those are great. But so what you've done is lovely lines. We're going to do circles. Um, and you can do, but you can you can do different options through that. That's totally fine. Can we do different shapes? Absolutely. What you want to do though is make sure.
that you make a shape that you can put chocolate ganache in between them. So you might want to make them a little bit fatter. Um, and so the discs work really well. I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you the ones I made earlier and then you'll know what they're about. Can I do a bit first? Okay, then let the little Lola have a go. And keep okay. experimenting. Let's just put that this out. It's sort of what you're after. Yeah? You see those two little coins? And then we're going to stick them together with chocolate ganache. Okay, and I'm going to show you the fancy, fancy, fancy ones that I've done. So Dot and I did those ones yesterday, and you can see how when they bake, they bake almost exactly the way that they go in the oven. So they don't really spread, um, and they don't melt very much at all. So if you've got wrinkly edges or anything, then that's what they'll bake. They won't soften out. Okay, so, but that, that's a lovely little coin that is then going to get sandwiched together with chocolate. Um, I'll show you my super fancy one. Are you ready? Everyone ready? Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so that is an absolutely classic Viennese biscuit. Oh, actually, not really. Fancy piping. Fancy star tip piping. And not really, you don't think it's too fancy? No, it's no, 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 no. It's not really classic Viennese biscuit typing. Oh, it is. That's how they serve them in Viennese coffee shops. And then these I did as an example so that you can see what happens when you use a not so wide star tip. If you use a very tight star tip, they end up like this, quite a, quite a bit more um, frilly. So very pretty, but you've got to work a little bit harder and get a little bit more on the paper. But if you can see for perspective, you can see the sort of size that we're going for. So roughly, if you made a circle with your thumb and forefinger, about that size if you're a grown-up. So if you're a child and you've got smaller, you might want to go a little bit bigger. So I'm going to just pipe out. I think you can see fairly well from there. I'm going to pipe straight down. I've twisted the top of my piping bag. I'm going to pipe straight down and hold my piping bag about half a centimetre away from the paper and hold it in the same place. And I'm going to keep squeezing until I've got a nice blob and then I'm going to release the pressure and twist to lift it off. And there's my first one. And then I'm going to go again with the next one. I'm holding it in place just slightly above the paper. I'm going to count to three. Release the pressure a little bit and twist it off. And I'm always keeping the bag nice and tight and holding the top of it so that I've got control over the top of the bag. I'm not squeezing it down at the bottom, always holding at the top of the bag. One, two, three. It's a very similar technique that I do with macaron as well. And again, nice and tight. Oh, you're doing a beautiful job over there. I've got to, mm, I don't have enough. I got too much cookie dough. You got too much cookie dough? No, I don't. Well, if you want, you could join two together to make some much larger ones. Laura? Yes, lovely. Uh, this is what they look like. Ooh, look at you. They are fantastic. Are you pleased with them? Uh, yeah. Yeah? So the thing that you can do, if any of them look as though you don't really love them, scrape them off and pop them back in the bag and go again. Or if you think that there are some that are too small, or if you've got lots of different shapes and sizes, just scrape them up and pop them in the bag and go again. Because it takes a bit of practice doing this, yeah? Can you see mine? That's what you're aiming for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think you're doing a great job first time around. And Do you see who that is, Dot? Yeah. I think that's Mia and Lola. I don't think Lola. <laughs> I think it is. It's amazing. All right. So I'm going to keep going with these while you guys do yours. 
Um, and then we're going to pop them in the oven. And while they're in the oven, we're going to make our ganache. And they don't take very long in the oven, these at all. And the look that you're going for is a very sort of blonde, just golden finish. We did some yesterday, the recipe that we looked at said to put them in for 12 minutes. I think maximum probably eight, especially if they're quite small. Of course you can, sweetheart. Trouble is, I've now made it really hard for you. Do you know what, should we scrape some of those and put them in here? Yeah. Yeah? Because I made it get harder as it gets down to the bottom. Why don't you just pop them straight in here, lovely? Yeah? The joy of this dough is that nothing bad happens to it, really. Why don't we do, yeah, because we've got lots of these little baby ones, don't we? Yeah. And they're quite fun when they're all fully. Yeah. But you've done a lovely job. And then while you do some piping out, I can show them what I mean about the bits. Okay. Let me just make sure we haven't got any air pockets in there. Yep, there you go. And then, do you remember how I showed you that these um, they're not perfect, but they don't have to be perfect because if they look like, if they're too perfect, then they look like you bought them from the shop. That's no good. So these are nice little sort of fat coin shapes that we've got here. And we made those by taking these little balls that we rolled or that we measured out with a tablespoon measure, gently roll them in your hand so that they're nice and shiny and smooth. Pop them back on the, on the, tray, so I've lost my ability to speak now, I'm so hot, um, and just very gently push the top, very gently, so that you get a nice little fat coin, basically. So I'm going to do that with these. And try and make the sides a bit smooth, Yeah. if you don't, it will look a bit like dirty. Yeah, yeah, it gets a little bit cracked, doesn't it? Yeah. I might even do these between, between my hands and I'll show you what they look like. But yeah, we, we worked out that these work really well if you roll them in your hands to get rid of the, the cracks around the edges. That's a slightly smaller one, but no big deal. And then if everyone's taken the chocolate off the heat, if you've, especially if you've got a sous chef, you could ask your sous chef, Dot, those are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, only, only. They look amazing. Um, we're going to put our four tablespoons of cream into our chocolate. And I just didn't want to do that when the chocolate was super, super hot because otherwise sometimes the cream splits. So I'm going to go and get my cream and we'll add our four tablespoons of cream to the chocolate. There we go. I see it's still quite warm, our chocolate. I'll pop that out of the way. Have we got a tablespoon of somewhere? Yeah, it's in the middle. Uh -huh. Very organised and put everything away already. So, I'm just going to pour in four tablespoons now into our 75 grams of melted chocolate. One, two, three, four. Nice bit of product placement for weight tracer. <laughs> there we go. And then we're going to stir it. Well, you can see that down here. But we're going to stir it until the cream is completely combined and incorporated with the chocolate. And you'll notice that the chocolate starts to thicken up with the introduction of the cold cream. And then, we put that in the fridge for maybe 10, 15 minutes, just to firm up enough that you can use it as a lovely thick glue. Don't put your hot saucepan in the fridge, put it into something else. There you go, look at that. Pretty good, huh? It's 
So put that into something maybe plastic and don't put the hot mixture straight onto a glass shelf or you'll crack the shelf. So I'm going to put mine into this bowl and then I think it might be time to get our cookies into the oven dot. Do you want to get those ones in and then we'll keep going with the, yeah, let's pop those ones in. And we can keep going with those. So, I'm going to put those in. We don't have an oven that's got a glass door. So I'm going to put those in for seven minutes um, at 180. I'm going to set a timer um, and then we'll check them. So you guys can go ahead and do the same thing if you like. Let's see, and I'm going to put my chocolate just into the fridge for a minute or two. We've got another batch that we can use to show you. Which hilariously has gone quite hard now. <laughs> oh, there we go. Very good. So, once your ganache has been in the fridge for a little while, it's going to thicken up like really firm, um, almost like sort of play dough. In fact, funny enough, it's gonna thicken up almost to the consistency of the dough that you just used to make your cookies. Hey. Yeah, well, it will. It will. It will, it will. We know, because we tested it. Okay, so we've got, I'm just beating it slightly, because this is a here's one we made earlier. The you lot are all going to have to be a little bit patient and you can put your cookies together later because you're going to wait for your cookies to cool too before you put them together. So, have we got all of our coins made? Not quite. We're going to roll them up nice and shiny. We've got quite a lot. So the recipe says to make Actually, that's easier to do in between your in between your hands. Actually, the recipe says that it makes twelve cookies. In other words, you get twenty-four little balls that then add together to make twelve cookies. Um, I think you can make more than that, or you can make less than that if you want to make really big ones. Um, yeah, sometimes people make long ones that look like sort of fat snakes. Um, but yeah, once you've mastered the basics of this, the world is your oyster. Um, you could maybe sandwich them together with lemon curd, could be nice, with jam, all sorts of things. Custard. Ooh, custard, like an, like an old-fashioned custard cream. Ooh, yum. <laughs> yeah, anything that works. And the other thing, guys, you'll be pleased to know that these go phenomenally with is... Always chocolate, no. Ice cream. <laughs> Which everybody needs at the moment if they're living in London for sure, um, or anywhere else that's a bit hot. They look really cute if you make an ice cream sundae and then with these lovely little Viennese kisses stuck together with chocolate and popped in the top. All right? No. no. What happened? Yeah, perfect. All right, so we've had ours in now for about four minutes and we're going to check them at the same time as popping in our next batch, which we'll have to remember to set the time for as well, luckily. All right, ready? Should we see? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nothing. Nothing. No colour at all. <laughs> You ask Alexa to set the timer. For what? For eight minutes. minutes. Ask Alexa to set, set timer for eight minutes. Set timer for eight minutes. And then what we're going to do, because we've got some we made earlier, make sure you all set your timers, yeah, for eight minutes. Or if you've got a glass door, just keep an eye on them. And you want to take them out when they look like that, when they've got that lovely golden colour to them, not when they look like that. <laughs>
which you can still eat them, but they'll be much prettier and nicer when they look like that. Okay, so do you want to sandwich a couple together, sweetheart? You can get some I'm teaspoons. Not, I'm not very good at sandwiching them together because I didn't get that good. Well, that's all right. We can figure it out. Yeah, look, I might do a tasty one. Yeah, get two teaspoons, that'll be perfect. I'm just going to wipe this with a bit of cream up off the counter. That's clearly my fault. There we go. And then if you've got a mummy or a daddy around that's been working hard today, you could tell them to put the kettle on and make a nice cup of tea because there will be treats coming. Yeah. Now what we could do, darling, is mix in the butter that we just, the ganache that we just made now as well. Do you want to go and grab it from the fridge? And we'll mix that through. It's staying very cold because I've got it in the metal pot. Have you seen the white bowl? Very good. Okay, how's that looking? Pretty good. Yeah, so that's thickened up very nicely, but I think what we might do is just add a little bit of this very thick one in to just cool it down a little bit so that we can sandwich them together. Well, you don't want it too wet because then it will just come with boiling down at the side, yeah. which is something that we learned when making ice cream sandwiches with a that's right, we did. The ice cream was a bit too wet, wasn't it? And so when you bite into it, all the ice cream came squelched on the side. So we had to put it in the freezer mm -hmm. for like mm -hmm. the night or rest of the night, and then we had it the next morning and it was fit. But also, she's come up with uh, accidentally on purpose with a fantastic idea too, which is that these cookies would be delicious whilst I said that they would be great on. Um, if you froze the ganache. Right. You could freeze the ganache inside and make them into little ice cream cookies. Or you could even forego the ganache completely and do ice cream in between. Would also work really, really well. Okay, that's a little bit lumpy, but when it, when it cools down, it'll be fine. You can sandwich it together with the other one. I'm going to these again. No, they're still a little bit wet. Well, maybe this time. Actually, I'm, I'm on 170, so that would be why they're not, they're not going quite as golden as before. How's everybody else's turning out? Are they getting there? Let's see. Oh, yes. They're starting to look nice. Perfect. And then you can go and get, while they're cooking, you can go and get a... Um, a pretty plate. Which plate would you like to use, Dot? I don't know. A pretty strawberry you? plate or a pretty blue plate? Strawberry. Strawberry. Okay, strawberries. Do you? Oh, you might be right. That's hilarious. I've always thought of that as my strawberry plate. It's not a strawberry plate at all. What do you think, guys? Raspberry or strawberry? Raspberry or strawberry? Raspberry. Raspberry, raspberry right? <laughs> Called it my strawberry plate for I don't know thirty years. <laughs> we're, we're, a house, we're a house divided here. Mom, yeah, I think mom it's strawberries. Thinks strawberries. Yeah. There you go. Maybe it's a mother daughter thing. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever it is, fruity plate. <laughs> okay, and we'd like the fruity plate over the blue plate. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And now, yeah. Oh, did you just do what I think you did? My it was she crumbs. just wiped her finger on her t-shirt. It was crumbs. Health and safety would have a field day. It's a professional kitchen you're in, lady. <laughs> oh, look, guys. Can we show them? How cool are those? Very cute, huh? Pretty, pretty. So when you make these, put them together. Remember to let the cookies cool to room temperature because otherwise when you put your cold ganache in between, they're going to slip and slide and melt everywhere as well. So don't do that. So you have to be patient, I'm afraid. Um, and we're just going to pop, I'm going to do a coin one. 
two. Are you? And once you get, once you know the recipe and you can play with all sorts of piping bag tips and all kinds of things. Oh look, it looks like a little hamburger. It's very cute. Uh -huh. Need more. Huh? Need more, need more. Last one. I need to check on mine. Well, I think we can let people carry on. Okay. Everybody think they know what they're doing? Yeah, yes, we maybe. And then we've got a question. Next week. So I think we've only got two more of these before it's the summer holiday. Well, how are you doing them over the summer? <laughs> we absolutely can carry on doing them over the summer holiday. If anybody would like to join us, let me know. Get the mummies and daddies to send me a message. But in the meantime, we've got next week, we need, we need a vote is required. We've got two options. So we're going to do a next girls class. Yes. No, still free, free class still next week, next Wednesday. But we've been asked by lots of people, could we do a knife skills class? Yeah. So it's not going to be super complicated, but we are going to do a knife skills class, which will be how to hold the knife properly, how to cut certain things. And we've got a couple of options. The first one is either a Caesar salad. Caesar salad. Or a Greek salad with chicken skewers. So we'll either do a grilled chicken Caesar salad with some crudite so that we get some nice skills in there, or an ultimate Greek salad and grilled chicken skewers in a yogurt and lemon marinade. Have a think. Chicken Caesar, Greek chicken and Greek salad. And if that takes too quickly, then maybe with the, the Greek salad, maybe we could make some flatbreads with it. Oh, oh my God, now you're talking. Yeah, that might be a masterclass we've got going on there now. Yeah. I guess you guys are so advanced though now, having taken this ride with us for a little while. Well, not all of you. No, not all of you. Some of you, this might be your first class. Oh, they're nearly there. So that's now 10 minutes that those have had. So do you know what? It, it turns out at 170, 180, everyone's ovens are different. Um, maybe it is actually 12 minutes. But we had ours in for 12 minutes and they were terrible. Mm. Love it, yeah. Can we have a beans biscuit? And yes. there's five on the plate. And Stanley can't eat one because he's not human. He's a dog and chocolate bread. It, it, is, it is true, yes, Thank you can. You. I think you ought to just have one. Mm -hmm. Will you go and turn Alexa off as well? Okay. She's very annoying. All right, ladies, so if you want to put in the chat what you like the sound of best, Greek chicken with Greek salad or chicken Caesar, and we will do whatever is voted for most next week. And then the last one, I think we might do something cakey for the last one. Um, but if anybody's got uh, special requests, send messages to me. Ooh, 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 we've got a Greek chicken, Greek chicken. Chicken Caesar. Yeah, Caesar. Greek salad. Ooh. Ah, chicken it's Caesar tight. Green. It's tight. We've got one chicken Caesar, one Greek salad. Oh, no. I can't work it out. Okay, one Caesar, dot, you be Greek, Greek, I'll be Caesar. Okay, I've got one for Caesar, you've got one for Greek salad. Another one for Greek salad. I've got another chicken Caesar. I've got a chicken Caesar, three against two. Anyone else, anyone else? I vote for Greek. You vote for Greek, so three against three. We need a casting vote, please. I mean, bye, bye, and you have to write. Greek, please. Okay, done. Greek, okay? <laughs> Greek salad and Greek chicken. Now, next week, what I want you to do then is make sure that you get, um, if you've got them, metal skewers. Because it would, and tell whoever is in charge of the barbecue, which in our house is me, because no, women know how to barbecue it. better. Dad's rubbish at barbecue. She's clearly not my daughter. Um, go and find yourself some nice metal skewers because it conducts the heat through 
the meat and it cooks them and makes the chicken much more juicy. Um, so, and if you don't have a barbecue, don't worry, you can also do it in the oven, okay? But so we're going to make Greek chicken skewers, we're gonna marinate them in yogurt, and garlic and lemon, they're absolutely delicious. And we're gonna make an ultimate Greek salad. So next week, you guys are cooking for your whole family, all right? Oh, look, look, they look gorgeous. Cookies coming out. Yeah, grab ours too. Yay! Perfect! Perfect! Oh God, yes, please turn the oven off. Oh, we're melting over here. There you go, lovely people. Beanie's biscuits. So, we will love you and leave you. Please, be careful taking them out of the oven. Make sure that you take us some pictures, please, and send them to us, because we love seeing all your creations. Love to. We love it. And we will see you next week. And holler if anybody wants to do anything special, let us know. Um, and please, as always, our classes are free. If you get a chance, if you've got a mummy or a daddy nearby, tell them to go online and make a donation, please, to the Felix Project. Donate to Cook19 or Repertory of Felix. And if ever you feel like there's this really cool thing that you really want to bake, but you don't know how to bake it because the ingredients are wrong or something's wrong with it, and you don't know how to bake it, let us know. We will help you. <laughs> we love you guys loads. Thanks so much for coming. Have fun putting your cookies together. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Make a Bye. or an iced coffee, particularly good with an iced coffee. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh yeah, ice cold milk also very good idea. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.